Well, today is a very special day for both of you. It's the beginning of your life together as you share in this relationship as husband and wife. I suppose for all of us there are times when we like to be alone. Some of you who have little children are looking for that time when you can just have space for yourself. But loneliness is something that no one really wants in their life. From the very beginning of creation, God knew that. And though he had created the man, he said it is not good for him to be alone. And then he created the woman and he brought the two of them together into a complementary relationship with one another. The writer of Ecclesiastes wrote these words that you just heard. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But how sad for the person who has no one. When two lie together, they keep warm. But how does one person keep warm by themselves? And though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a three-cord strand is not quickly broken. I think this writer is simply telling us today, and for you, Jen and Addison, maybe directly at you, that you need each other. And he says, there are three things that you need to understand about this relationship of two people being together. The first one is that you can be there to mutually encourage each other. If one falls down, who's going to be there to lift the other person up? If a person is alone, they have to struggle by themselves. There will be times in life when you struggle, when you fall down, Things will not always be easy, and life will not always be smooth. Our culture says, try to make it on your own, be tough, shake it off, move forward. But the question is, who's going to be there for you when you fall down? What you are saying to each other today is that I will be there for you. I will be there for you. The second thing he says is it's important to be there for each other to provide support when you're feeling vulnerable. If two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm by themselves? We find the warmth from another person. Sometimes we find that physically when we are close to them. But there's also being there for each other where you find that warmth which encourages you when you are feeling exposed and really vulnerable in the world. Think back to that first day of school when you had to go by yourself. You wondered, is anybody going to be there for me? Apart from your mother or father who couldn't let you go. But there will be many new areas of life where you will be venturing forth. You'll do it together. Being there for each other. And that will get you through because you know the other one is there. And then the writer says, you provide that support and protection when you are attacked. One might prevail against another. Two can withstand one, but a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We face all kinds of adversities today, more than just physical challenges that might be out there. There are some adversities that will come against us emotionally and spiritually and relationally. It's wonderful to have someone who is going to be there for you. The very first king of Israel was Saul. He started out well, but he started to fall apart. And when his kingdom was falling down, he discovered this young man whose name was David, who would go against a giant in order to defend the nation. And though this young man was supportive of the king, the king became quickly threatened by him and eventually sought his life. David had to run year after year from this man. But there was one person in his world who was there for him, and his name was Jonathan, the son of the king. And it says in the Bible that their souls were knit together. They were there for each other in the midst of adversity. So it's important to have someone take your part when your world is falling apart. But the Bible says it's a threefold cord. And the third party is Jesus himself. As he is at the center of your lives, 
may he continue to be at the center of your marriage. And as you give your unconditional love to him, he will love through you to touch each other. Today, you are beginning this journey together with him. And may God's presence and blessing enable and empower you as you live together for the rest of your days to the glory of God. Amen. Today is a special day for all of us as we have known Addison and Jen and we come now to hear them share in their vows with each other. <coughs> Jen and Addison have come to make this covenant of marriage and to seek God's blessing. And as we witness the event, we share in their joy and we also surround them with our prayers. The Bible tells us that marriage is a gift of God and in creating us male and female, God gives marriage for the full expression of love between a man and a woman, for the lifelong companionship, help, and comfort that husband and wife share with each other. God also gives marriage for the birth and nurture of children and for the building up of family life. And God gives marriage for the good of human society, which can be secure and free only where the covenant of marriage is honored. And God gives marriage that husband and wife may reflect God's steadfast love for creation and that the family may become a sign of God's kingdom here on the earth. Marriage was blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus at the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. The Apostle Paul tells us that marriage is a symbol of the mystical union between Christ and the Church. And the Apostles instructed those who enter into the marriage relationship to develop a mutual respect and love, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, to provide for each other and for their household in honesty and industry, to pray for each other, to encourage each other, and to live together as those who inherit eternal life. So marriage is a very high calling, not to be entered into lightly or carelessly, but prayerfully, responsibly, and with reverence for God. And so as Addison and Jen give themselves to each other, we are seeking God's blessing on their marriage. <clears throat> 